Hello and welcome to today's video lesson. It is on hormonal homeostatic control pathways. And we've been talking about homeostasis recently. And remember that we said homeostasis, it comes from the Greek words, which means same and steady. And it refers to any process that living things use to actively maintain fairly stable conditions that are necessary for survival. And you can see the background here of the man, Jimi Hendrix himself, and um, I'll get to him. There's a bit of a Jimi Hendrix theme to this video. But first up, let's get into the goals. So the purpose of today's lesson is to recall that hormones are chemical messengers produced in endocrine, endocrine glands, and they're necessary for relaying messages. These messages um, in the form of hormones can move throughout the body in the circulatory system, so that's in our blood vessels, or in the lymphatic system. To recognize how a cell sensitivity to a specific hormone is directly related to the number of receptors, so we'll talk about upregulation and downregulation. And lastly, to describe how receptor binding activates a signal transduction pathway. So you can pause the video here and write some kind of summarized version of those learning goals now. So let's get into it. First up, hormones as chemical messengers. Uh, I showed you this picture in class and it's, it's a photo of this man by the name of Robert Wadlow and he lived in the early 1900s and he can, you can see just from this image that's a regular um, sized man on the right of him. I'm not sure who he is, but that's Robert Wadlow on the left and he had a height of 2.72 meters, uh, a shoe size of 37, and a wingspan of 2.88 meters. Now, obviously, this is uh, ex extraordinary for someone to be this tall. But what was actually going on there is he had he had a brain tumor, and that brain tumor was pressing on a gland uh, in his brain called the pituitary gland, and that is responsible for releasing the hormone called growth hormone um, that we all release, uh, but due to the, the tumor pressing on it, it, it caused excessive release of this particular hormone. And um, he didn't live very long. I think it was in, a, in about his 30s when he passed away. And it's just because there were a number of health conditions associated uh, with all of that. But that's to introduce us to the endocrine system. And it's this system that is, it's made up of glands that release chemicals or hormones into the blood to regulate body functions. Like we were talking about last week in, last week in terms of the neural system, the, ho the hormonal system is also really important in maintaining homeostasis. Um, but I just want to start with this analogy. So let's talk about Gmail for a sec. Like I said in class, Gmail can be can be said it's let's let's think of that as the the nervous system where you can choose someone specifically who you're going to write to write in their email address and you send a message directly to that person it is fast and it's accurate we can think of that as the nervous system when a nerve impulse fires when we see a stimulus our um, senses our receptors pick up that stimuli and send it to our brain. They say that nerve um, impulses can travel as fast as a Formula One car up to 360 kilometers an hour and it goes to exactly where it needs to go. Um, unlike the hormonal system or the endocrine system, it uses hormones and they are a lot slower and widespread in what they have to do. So think of it as Facebook, like you're writing a a post in your newsfeed for everyone to see. You don't know who's going to see it when, um, but it's this general widespread message that is sent. People might see it sooner. People might see it later. Some people might not even get it, even though it's sent out to everyone. So that's kind of like the endocrine system and the way hormones work. Hormones travel throughout our body and they can last in our body for hours and hours, even after they've stopped being released. Um, and not every cell, even though our blood supply gets to every cell in our body, right, because our cells need oxygen and sugar and we need to get rid of, rid of wastes, not every cell responds to those hormones and 
Just think about why that could be now. Um, so that is an introduction to the endocrine system. And basically, it's a way of sending messages throughout the body in the form of hormones. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about hormones now. So a hormone is a chemical messenger that is transported um, via the bloodstream to act on distant target cells. Hormones are specific and will only activate cells or tissues that possess the appropriate target receptor. So even though all cells might see the message, they might not respond to it because they don't have receptors that pick up that message and tell the cell to do something. The endocrine system, the endocrine system like I said, is slower to initiate, but it has a more prolonged response when compared to the nervous system. So if you think about after a flight or fight response, even hours after the, the event or the fright, if your hands might still be shaking, your heart's still pounding. That's because that adrenaline is still pumping throughout your body. Um, so in this image here, you can see that there's a number of glands that we have um, in our body. There's a, there's a few in our brain. We have the pituitary, we have the pineal, we also have the thyroid and the parathyroids a little bit lower and the thymus. Um, but then we also have our adrenal glands, which sit just above our kidneys. And then there's also uh, the ones asso associated with the sex cells. So we've got the ovaries and the testes and they produce um, different chemicals. And also the pancreas is, is really important um, in, in terms of the liver. It releases insulin and glucagon and that regulates our blood sugar levels. So insulin takes sugar out of the blood into our cells. But then if we say we're fasting and uh, we haven't eaten much or we're in a period of starvation, that's when um, the pancreas might release glucagon. And that does the opposite effect. It takes that stored sugars out of our cells and puts it into our blood so that our cells can then use it. Um, there's two main types of endocrine glands that I want to talk about. Um, and they are what are called hydrophilic or hydrophobic. So when I said endocrine glands, I meant to say two types of hormones um, that I want to talk about. So hydrophilic, as the name suggests, means that they love water or they can, they're soluble in water. And what that allows it to do is it allows it to, to move throughout the body um, dissolved in water. And hydrophilic hormones include insulin, um, and they're, they're these water-loving hormones that don't pass easily through cell membranes. And if you think about the structure of a cell membrane, you would remember that that's because the inside region of a cell membrane is actually hydrophobic. Those heads, they face out and the tails face in and create this hydrophobic zone. So that means hormones that are hydrophilic dissolved in water they can't pass through. And it's also due to their size and their, um, their charge that can't allow them to do that. So if they can't pass into a cell, how do they bind to a receptor? It's because there are receptors in the membrane, on the outside of the membrane, that those hormones can then bind to. Um, the, the other is the hydrophobic hormone. And these are also often known as steroid hormones. Um, and they include testosterone and estrogen. Um, and what they are is they dissolve in fats and they can easily pass through that hydrophobic layer of the plasma membrane and therefore enter cells. So the kind of receptors that they bind to are receptors within the cells. Where are they? Well, they can be um, located in the cytoplasm or they can be located uh, on the nucleus. So two types of hormones hydrophilic and hydrophobic. So that's all for um, this introduction to hormone as chemical messengers, but we'll get into the next slide now. So upregulation and downregulation. Um, this is referring to, to a cell's sensitivity to a specific hormone. So how, how sensitive is a cell when it responds to a hormone? What determines that? Well, it's all to do with the number of receptors that it displays. So if there's 
basically um, an increase in receptors and makes a cell more sensitive to that hormone and then performs whatever that, um, that receptor initiates the cell to perform. But if there's not many receptors, um, then that's called down regulation. And it means that the cell is less sensitive to that hormone, whatever it is. So I'll show you this image here and talk you through it. Um, basically, more receptors makes a cell more, sens more sensitive and fewer receptors makes a cell less responsive. So here we can see um, an example of this happening where we have a hormone and it is it is released and it finds a receptor and maybe maybe for instance there isn't much of this neurotransmitter this hormone that's being released and so what the cell is going to do is when it picks it up is it actually generates um, that cell to to really quickly start producing more and more receptors to pick it up and that increases sensitivity or upregulates the sensitivity of that cell to the hormone um, the opposite being um, down regulation where you would see, well, if, if there was um, a hormone that was released and there's not many receptors, or maybe they um, actually um, stop producing more receptors, then that's called down regulation. And so the response to that hormone isn't going to be as large. And we actually see this in the case of people who, um, who use drugs. So um, like first time users who are exposed to a, a recreational drug, they might get this, this massive hit or this massive high and it's because their, their receptors are, are so sensitive to what is going on. But then when they do it the next time, even though they get the same amount of whatever drug it was, um, their cells are no longer like sensitive or they need more to stimulate that same response. It's the same kind of idea that... Um, yeah, desensitize, desensitize, desensitization occurs in that way. But basically, if you just remember and think of it like this, upregulation means increase in receptors, downregulation, um, decrease in receptors. That's how um, the cell determines how sensitive it is to a particular hormone. So next up, we're going to talk about, cool, when a hormone is released and it hits a receptor, how does that get the cell to do whatever it needs to do. And that's called um, like when a hormone binds to a receptor, it, it activates this, this cascade. Think of like a waterfall where it just, or think of this analogy, say you, you've got like a whole bunch of wine glasses all pull, um, piled up on top of each other really nicely. So if you fill the top one up, it overflows into the next one and that fills the next one up. So there's this cascading pathway um, that occurs when a receptor is activated. And first up, let's start with this image. So this is this is Jimi Hendrix, right? And um, he's playing his guitar right now. And if we say there's a stimulus here, his fingers on the strings, he's causing those strings to vibrate as he picks them. That's the stimulus. That's like the hormone that's being released. But then we need something to pick that that signal up. And so there's these pickups, right? And these pickups, they pick up the, those sound vibrations and they pass it on and then it's sent to um, amplifiers and it amplifies that, that little signal of that vibrating string into this, this massive sound, this massive noise. And that's kind of like what a signal transduction pathway is like. So when a signal molecule so let's jump over here. When a signal molecule binds to its receptor protein, the receptor protein changes shape and now we say it's, it's activated. And once it's activated, it, um, it causes, it causes this um, protein, this receptor, um, to start this signaling cascade that transmits messages through the cell to proteins in the cell to start doing something to stimulate a response. Remember, proteins do everything. They make whatever we need, they do whatever process we need. Enzymes are a form of protein as well. Um, and this is called the signal transduction pathway. So an example of how hormone can 
bind to a receptor and stimulate a response uh, is the hydro, hydrophobic hormone um, known as a steroid. They can, remember we said, pass through a cell membrane. And what they do is they bind to the receptors on the nucleus and they can actually, they're called transcription factors that when bound, um, they determine what part of DNA is expressed. And so that process can determine like what kind of um, cell is being produced from that message coming out of the nucleus. There's also other types of receptors that hormones can bind to that do different things, which you can read about in the textbook. They're called G protein coupled receptors and um, also tyrosine kinase receptors. But either way, there's this signal transduction pathway, this process of like hormone, receptor, and amplification. And that's also seen here. So the last thing I want to speak about is um is what's called like second secondary messages or this process of amplification. And when signal transduction in cells occurs, the use of secondary messages are activated. Secondary messages often amplify the signal by activating many molecules inside the cell rather than just one each. This means that a single hormone, a single molecule of a hormone can have a really large effect through its secondary messages. So one, one little hormone can have, can have this massive effect um, because there's these secondary messages that stimulate all these different other um, areas in the cell. And so that is the video on hormones and just remember the overview of all of this is that the neural system is involved in immediately sending messages to the cns and the cns sends messages back to the effectors that can be glands or muscles um, but also we can have signals that are sent to the brain and those brains signals are then sent back to the, the, the glands that produce hormones and those hormones can elicit more longer lasting widespread responses through the process of glands releasing hormones. And so for today, your homework is to, of course, read the chapter of the textbook that this is all on and that's in chapter 11. I hope that you guys have found this video helpful and that you might watch back over this a couple of times before your final exam just to refresh but have a fantastic holidays and god bless